healthy habits and routines. So if I make promises to you and I keep breaking my promises to you and I keep not showing up, whether it's the third time, the fourth time, everybody's a little different. Some people after the first or second time, that's it, you're, you're out, right? Some people, they give you a few more chances, but eventually, inevitably, you're going to think to yourself, well, I can't trust Danny. I can't rely on her. She always makes promises and she, she never keeps them. So it's easy for us to see it when it's someone else, when it's, some, when, when it's someone that's, when it's outside of us, but it's a little harder to see when it's our own self. Right. So it's the same thing as just like if I'm making promises to you of, hey, we're going to go to the gym and I don't follow through and then you end up feeling like I'm a flake and then you end up feeling like I'm not dependable and unreliable. It's the same thing with ourselves when we make an, a promise to ourselves, And that's why discipline is, you know, sometimes I'll have clients ask me, you know, well, how, you know, we talk about things of like self-love and, you know, loving ourselves before you love somebody else. So like, what does that mean? What does that look like? How do I actually do that? How do I actually start to care about myself or respect myself or have confidence or self-esteem? The best way to start doing that immediately, the quickest way is by following through with the promises that you make to yourself, no matter how hard they are. Operating in such a way where you're driven by your commitments and not by your feelings and your emotions. It's okay to have feelings and emotions, right? We can still validate ourselves and acknowledge those feelings and emotions and still follow through with ourselves because then what happens is when you do follow through with yourself then on the other side of it you and you start to say oh wait hmm she really does mean what she says and says what she means right you're when i'm pointing to this i'm not trying to make you feel crazy or anything like that but this is a thought bubble right we all have thoughts you know how in the comic strips when somebody's thinking something and it looks like this looks like a thought bubble for example Let's say tomorrow morning we decide we want to go to the gym. Oh, it's Saturday. Do we really feel like going? I don't really feel like going. I just want to stay inside. I'm just going to sleep. And I hit snooze, right? Now, me and me, me realizes that they cannot, that me cannot rely on me. You follow? So that's where we end up creating a lack of respect for ourselves because we're not even following through with the very things we're telling ourselves. So the other thing I want to mention is um, some of the ways, the underlying ways to dig up what we're making a little bit more important than being our word, be being in integrity and following through with our promise that we make to ourselves. Because here's the thing, let's be real, right? If I were to tell you, oh, I, I'm so sorry that I'm late, um, I, I got, I hit traffic or I used to say this in older videos when I used to talk about this topic, I'd say my dog is sick. Unfortunately, my, I had to put my dog down so I can't use that. I should, I should still be able to use that example, right? Like, oh, my dog is sick. That's why I'm late. You know, we can use all these excuses, right? But if you told me, Hey, Danny, I'm going to pay off all the rest of your student loans. If you show up for me tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. You bet you're behind, I'll show up, right? So I bet you challenge yourself. If you were to incentivize yourself with something that you really wanted, let's say it was winning the lotto, you know? Maybe you don't really care about winning the lotto, but if you did, I'm just using that as an example. Let's say you would like to win the lotto, right? And somebody said, hey, if I won the lotto and I gave you half of it, would you do da 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 da, the thing that it is that you've been putting off? Most likely you would when we're under tense situations or we have no other choice or, you know, it's interesting how life will put us in place. Like if you don't end up doing certain things that you know you have to be doing, there sometimes ends up being a way where life is like, all right, I'm going to show you, you're going to end up doing this. So I'm saying all that to say, what is the underlying reason as to why we're not doing the thing? What is the underlying reason? What are we making more important than following through with ourselves? I went to a training some years ago. Um, they kind of broke it down after like when COVID happened because it was very in person. And, and now the training, I don't, I don't know if they still exist or do their trainings anymore. Um, but anyways, they had this idea of, and 
it's not just an idea. I'm sure if you know, if you do a research, you can look at survival skills, right? So things like being comfortable, being right, looking good, and being in control. So if you really challenge, I'm gonna use um, being comfortable as an example, because I know we only have three minutes left and there's one other point I wanna make before we wrap up. Um, so rather than going through all four of these survival skills, I'm just gonna touch on being comfortable. Let's say for instance, I said to you, hey, we're go let's go to the gym, I wanna be your gym buddy. And you call me and you text me and I don't answer and I don't respond. I am choosing to, to, to just go back to sleep. I'd rather just sleep than, make, than follow through with the promise I made to you. Me choosing to go to sleep and not choosing to, be, to follow through with the commitment means that I'm choosing being comfortable more so than being in integrity. I'm prioritizing my comfort and going back to sleep than being my word, which looks like showing up and meeting you at the gym. Right. So now you can kind of follow and understand what I mean by what is the underlying reasons? What's really going on here? And of course, being right. You know, sometimes we make being right more important and we prioritize that than being our word. Sometimes we choose looking good aesthetically or people pleasing, um, being in control. Sometimes we so need to be in control that will break our word. Um, speaking of being in control, Healthy habits and routines are also a really effective way to manage negative self-talk. If you're somebody who you notice that your thoughts are really negative, you beat yourself up all the time, we, are, we tend to love having control. And sometimes it can feel like our thoughts are more in control of us. We can compensate this feeling out of control by creating order around us and rituals, routines, habits. That is a way to do that. And by doing these rituals the same time every day, every, every day, every morning, every evening, that's giving you a sense of order and control. And that can feel really good when your mind has a tendency to chatter.